getting off the exit right before the friggin' Lincoln Tunnel, I hit a pothole that apparently leads to the Hellmouth, and my front left tire, like, exploded. See, I was you say you, you I thought you were about to say your front left tire left. It went away. No, it just, like, there was a gash, like, this big, like an L-shaped gash. So thank God for AAA, but I was in the middle of nowhere. Like, I, of course, it's bumper to bumper traffic now. So I roll on this thing and everyone's like, hey, you're tired. And I'm like, do you think I'm unaware? I'm in a Honda Fit. My whole car is doing this because one tire is flat. Like, I, I drive a roller skate. I know. But thank you. Like, they were just trying to be nice. No reason to be a dick. So I'm like, yeah, I, I, I know. So I finally find somewhere to pull over and I'm on the longest never ending exit ramp ever with no shoulder. What 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 Right. Well my car is like So finally I managed to find a commuter lot and then I learned the wonderful road assistance laws of the state of New Jersey. So I called AAA. And they're like, "Okay, well you are you on the Garden State Parkway or the New Jersey Turnpike. Because if you are, we can't pick you up. We have to refer you to a local AAA sponsored garage to come. And it'll still be free and all. If you're not on the highway, we can come get you. But we have to figure out how to get to you without getting on the highway. Because our trucks aren't allowed on the highway. And I'm like, I don't, I don't care. Just send a truck. I don't care whose truck it is. I just need someone to change my tire. And I didn't know where I was because I was like, look, I'm going to tell you what I did and you can find where I am because I don't fucking know. But then a very nice man came and changed the tire. And now my tires are my car is sitting at the tire place because I made an appointment to buy new tires. And they were like, oh, we don't have any tires that fit that car. The roads in and around New York and New Jersey in that area, they are some of the worst I've ever driven on. Yeah. And, yeah. The, and the reason is no one ever gets off the road long enough for anyone to fix them. That's the problem is like currently I had to go through the Lincoln Tunnel. They're working on the Lincoln Tunnel. The Lincoln Tunnel should have two tunnels, one that goes one direction, one that goes the other. But they have one whole side closed. So there's just one tunnel going both ways and there's one lane and it's a fucking shit show. Because you can't, there's never times when people aren't on the roads. And even even then, even if with closing, because there's, they can never shut. The, so even with whatever work they manage to do, the roads are still fucked all over. I mean, they are, they're yeah. just terrifying. Well, I, and this time of year, from all the snowing and raining and freezing, potholes bloom like flowers. I, because I, it's just hell on the fucking asphalt. I can't remember which bridge we were on, but I swear to God, I saw rebar through the concrete as we were driving over it. Probably. So, yeah, that, and then I got to drive, you know, from... So I went to my thing, because I was like, I'm closer to my game than I am to home now, so fuck it, I'm going. So then at, like, 2.30 in the morning, I drove from Manhattan to Central Jersey on my donut. So I did 50, like, all the way home. <laughs> so I was like, I'm, I'm not fucking with this that's, donut. That's what happens. You cram too many monkeys into one place. Shit's not going to work right. Yeah. Yeah. And But you know what? In 50 years, it'll all be underwater, so it won't matter. Well, we have... All the monkeys will move to their new coastal property in Arkansas. Don't say that. I live in a coastal city. I'm fixing this goddamn house, Tara. Tie pontoons to it? <laughs> God damn it. Oh, uh, all right. So, because it is a Monday, we has the collection of the stupids. Sadly. Sadly, no. If not for the stupids... I wouldn't have a semi-pro internet gig. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And, oh, the things we do for love. Or at least lust. Or, <laughs> or 
really, 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 really badly interpreted <coughs> emotional states. Um, what what is the craziest thing a dude's ever done for you to to try to win your affections? Uh, some <laughs> asshole in college drove a bunch of staples into his leg to try and impress me. <laughs> this is to on a par me. with that. This is to actually... show me that he was impervious to pain. This is actually on a par with that. This is just about as stupid. Um, I've, I've just, the whole story, once you read, once we get into it, it just gets sadder and, and, and more, just, just sadder and more hilarious at the same time. Um, police, bank robbery suspect, try, trying to impress Taylor Swift. Oh. Okay. You know, at least I, he shot high. You, you got to give him credit for that. Yeah. Oh, he was from Ansonia. So that explains it. Police say a Connecticut man with a crush on singer Taylor Swift robbed a bank and then went to the pop star's Rhode Island mansion where he threw cash over a fence in an attempt to impress her. Oh, honey. Bruce Rowley of Derby is charged oh, with Derby even worse. Is charged with robbing an Ansonia bank on April 4th. Police say it seemed he wanted to propose to Swift, so he drove about 60 miles to Westerly, Rhode Island, and started throwing, and this is the sad part, started throwing some of the roughly sixteen hundred dollars he's charged with stealing oh, over honey. Swift's fence. She makes that like every 10 minutes. Six, it's like I'm gonna oh I'm I'm gonna get to I'm gonna propose Taylor, to Taylor Swift, Swift is not impressed with your sixteen hundred dollars with a bounty of sixteen hundred that will cover my water heater and that's about it like yeah but this is Taylor fucking Swift like she makes sixteen hundred dollars a minute she <laughs> she could buy you yeah friend. she, she could. could literally buy you. She could buy your the patent to your DNA. Yeah. And it wouldn't even make a dent in her savings. But he's from Derby, Connecticut. Like, <clears throat> you're not familiar with Connecticut. No. There's an area of Connecticut called the Valley. Ansonia, Derby, those kind of cities. Are you Cherry? She is. Oh, she's just walking around talking. Um, and it's kind <laughs> of a weird little cluster of towns where, like, there's like a little redneckville oh. in Connecticut. Like my manager, when I worked at Spencer Gifts, was from Ansonia, and he hacked the Muzak machine at the Spencers so we could only so we could pl play real CDs, but he would only let us play Frank Zappa and Yes. <laughs> <sighs> As the working at Spencer Gifts isn't punishment enough. <laughs> I just well, you know what? The entire Spencer's experience is kind of kind of enhanced by prog rock. So <laughs> Yeah, but like eight hours of nothing but Frank Zappa and yes every weekend for two like it's a lot. And that that's people from the valley. So hearing this guy's from Derby, this doesn't entirely surprise me. Sixteen hundred bucks. Sure. What the mean what, what could you He's probably thinking, what could she make in, in a day? Like a hundred? Like two hundred? Like, like a lot. A lot. A lot. Sixteen just You're going to jail. You're a poodle. You're going to jail for he's on a one hundred thousand dollar bond. What is it with Taylor Swift and Psychos? Because the guy who shot up the Waffle House a couple years ago said Taylor Swift was stalking him. I don't know. This is a uh, like oh, poor girl, man. Jesus Christ. Now I just realized I have to call this week. Look what, look what you made me do. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. I'm one of like three people that actually kind of like that song. God damn it. I, I admit with no small amount of shame that I really fucking dig the song where Taylor raps. And I know, I know. Like, I'm aware. But it's catchy. <laughs> Let her know 
I said that. What? That might be a win for Tara. It might be a win for Tara. Okay. <sighs> Let's move on to some people who are kind of not grasping the concept. Um, Peggy, say hello. No, say look at them. I don't want to look at them. It's a cat in a box. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. I love you. I put you back down. Okay. You go back over there. So let's 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 move along to a a different sort of missing the point that's been quite popular in America in the last few years, which confuses me greatly. Um. Now, if you're from outside of the U.S., uh, conservatives are in control of all three branches of the federal government currently. Um, they won. That's they won. So, um, yeah. and yet there have been angry boycotts of certain companies who have spoken up against conservative policies. And by and the reason I use the the much loathed air quotes for boycotts there is um they're not really good at the whole base concept. Well, a boycott is not giving the company your money. Yeah, there was the Starbucks boycott where they went in and bought coffee to make them write na- to make the baristas write names on it, so they to make them money. write "Make America Great Again." Yeah. Um, there was the NFL boycott where they bought NFL tickets and then burned them. Yeah. There was the curing boycott where they smashed curing. Uh, they smashed their curings and then Sean Hannity bought everybody new ones. Yeah. So they're bad at this. They're continuing their tradition. Uh, the the Yeti Cooler Company this week decided to break ties with the NRA. Uh oh. So we're talking a bit of the upping the ante here. Um, NRA members are shooting their yet three hundred dollar Yeti coolers. <laughs> Yeti manufacturers. What's a cooler worth three hundred dollars? Yeti manufacturers rugged outdoor coolers that are normally quite pricey, as a single Yeti cooler costs between two hundred and fifty and three hundred dollars. Although traditionally loved by hunters, Yeti this past weekend angered many of its gun-toting customers when it cut ties with the National Rifle Association. The howls of protests from NRA members included outraged gun owners filming themselves defacing and even shooting their Yeti coolers. Now, here's... You're not not hurting them. They already have your money. When you purchase a product from a company, you're done. They They have have your money. money. You have their product. You can do whatever the fuck you want with their product yeah it's yours if you want to smear yourself in peanut butter and shove that product up your ass that's fine because they have your money yes they they are not i mean they they can look and say okay well you shot it we have the money though right and you're still out of cooler dumbass Your, your cooler has holes in it because you shot it like, it's not like they have to give you your money back. Then. That's not that's not how it works. They still have your money. Can I just for a moment, all all the the, the responsible gun owner head tag that's that's like stuck to things. We're responsible gun owners. Why the yeah. fuck are you shooting inanimate objects? Oh, the first video, they blew it up with Tannerite. By, by the way, I'm over here just rolling my eyes over and over again. <laughs> Dan loves responsible gun owners. Now, you know me, I can respect a good explosion for a purpose. Not this doesn't make any fucking sense to me. But yeah, proving that you're a responsible user of something by using it to wantonly destroy things. That's... Not a great way to prove you're super responsible with that thing. Yeah, that's kind of scaring the fuck out of us. I'm going to prove I'm a responsible drinker by getting fucking smashed and driving around. Just, 
what well, how are they so bad at boycotts i mean just the, I don't know. the basic it's like no one's explained the concept to them that starbucks thing killed me because i was like one you're dumb you're still giving startups your money two all you're actually accomplishing is torturing a barista who's making nine dollars an hour and doesn't need shit and and probably spitting in your coffee yeah that too yeah, or decapping you it's because starbucks is really big on like they have stricter health codes than the health department but if you're an asshole at Starbucks, not a molecule of caffeine will pass your lips. That's that's don't, dirty. I like that. that little, little pro tip for everybody. Don't be a dick to the barista because they will decaf your ass. That's dirty. I like that. Because yeah. like it that. won't set off any allergies. It won't make you sick. You're just not going to get your high. It's that's just, their revenge. It's a boycott's a simple proposition. It's just don't give them your money. Right. Don't give them your money. It's, as soon as you give them your money, you lose the game of boycott. So I give them my money and I yell at them? No, no, so, no. So I, I take the thing that I bought years ago and I smash it? I mean, if you don't want it anymore, but that's not a boycott, though. So I, I give them my money, is what you're saying? No, no. But what do I do with my money, then? You keep it. Mm -hmm. Is that before or after I give them my money? I know that's that's I, not American. Yeah. Oh. Poor Peggy, can you not get comfortable? She just keeps like laying in her box and then getting up and turning around and. Spe Poor Peggy. Speaking of someone missing the point, bless. This is a bless. Bless your heart moment. I swear to God, this next one is oh bless. Bless your fucking heart. Okay. When you are attempting to conceal your identity there are, during a, a crime, there are some very basics that your mask must adhere to. Um, it must cover your face. Yeah. Um, and it must be opaque in some manner. It shouldn't be a fish bucket, because we've covered that before. Yeah. This guy, I... Bless your heart. Man tries to rob a GameStop with a plastic bag on his head. Oh. oh Jesus <laughs> I heard Dan. I heard you. It's cut open so his face is <laughs> showing. Yes. Do you know what that bag on his head is? That's the wrapper for one of those bulk cases of bottled water. Oh, God. And he just shoved it on his side. <laughs> but then he cut a hole for his face. He cut a hole for his face. That's the opposite of what you do. <laughs> if you're planning a life of crime, police department in Georgia offers some key advice. Choose your disguise better than the wannabe burglar who tried to hide behind a bottled water wrapper. The man, captured on surveillance video, tried to rob a GameStop in St. Mary's, Georgia. The video showed him running from the store with the plastic wrapper from a case of bottled water over his head. And, and the suspect, guess what, was identified no. as Carrie Hammond Jr., 22. He was last seen driving a white 2006 how, Ford Taurus. How did they identify this fucking criminal mastermind? <laughs> they do everything wrong at once. Just it's <laughs> okay. All he's covering is his hair, and he doesn't have remarkable hair. Like if I wanted to commit a crime, I would need to cover my hair because my hair is quite notable. Unique Angel but... Five in the channel says, "Well, he doesn't want to suffocate." I'm not convinced he actually considered that. <laughs> To be honest with you. <laughs> oh my god. Bless his dumpy khaki wearing heart. And I say this as one of the dumpy khaki wearers, okay? Like, god wow. damn. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> this, I mean, Jesus, have you never played one of the video games? Well, no, if you played a video game, you would think you'd be invisible if you stuck a cardboard box on yourself. True. <sighs> five stars. Uh. <laughs> I just, I love that action shot where he's just I like, <laughs> like, honestly, I want video of that in the Mission Impossible theme playing in the background. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but that wasn't the Mission Impossible. Whatever. Or the James Bond theme. Let's see, can I get the video to play? <laughs> or Jackie yeah, Sex. <laughs> let's let's get the here we go. Here's the video playing. There we go. There we go. Oh, we're on a delay. He's a running. He's a <laughs> run, dumbass, run. <clears throat> and I love even better. I love that he failed to rob the store. <laughs> Did he just not even grab anything? I don't know. He says he it was a fail. He, fa he failed to rob. <laughs> you didn't even grab one game just to make it worth it? Uh, not one Funko Pop? Nothing? We got to move on. This, this, we're heading to... Let's, where is this located? Japan. Oh, we're heading to Japan for this one. Now, I myself have quite often said, I don't want to wear pants today. I'm sure many of us have said this to woken up, faced the day, and said, God damn it, I don't want to put on pants right now. Many of us have gone through this. Probably. I get like chub rub, so I don't say that a lot, but because I, I got big thighs. But normally, however, we overcome this this fleeting thought and realize that whether we like it or not, pants are in fact a necessity. If you're going to leave the house, I mean, you can wear a dress. Dresses, kilts, shorts. And I was about to say, if you're a woman, you can wear a dress, but you can wear a dress for your dude. Hmm? You're non-binary. Who fucking cares? You can wear a dress. There are all manner of, you could get, get bust you out a toga for Christ's sake. Hell yeah. Dashiki. <clears throat> I mean, maybe not if you're white. That's bad luck. But, you know, but you get where I'm going. Most of us overcome this instinct and go, shit, I've got to wear pants. I've, I've got to cover up my nooks and crannies in some fashion. This dude did not. Oh. Uh, um, Sunday morning on 16th of April when Kenichi Kuroiwa... Kuro uh, Kochi City property division manager emerged from his apartment building to take out the trash at 6.20 a.m. Carrying his white garbage bag and wearing nothing but shoes, Kuroiwa walked along the building path to the residence garbage collection bo box as is his civic duty. However, before he could reach his destination, a police officer suddenly came out of nowhere and asked, what are you doing? Answer to, didn't really matter because he was caught red-bottomed and arrested on the spot for public indecency. It's also clear the officer's timing was too perfect, as uh, Kiro Iwa, uh must have realized he was the he must have realized he was, had had to be the target of a sting operation. The rest of the officer told media last week we got reports from area residents that a naked man often appeared at the neighborhood around six a.m. He did so, this all the time. So investigators were put on stakeout. <laughs> Authorities also said uh, Kuro Iwa was cooperating and admitted to the charges, saying he did it because, quote, it's annoying to put on clothes. I mean, yes. Yeah. Agreed. But that is one of the rules. That's, that's like the basic society. rule. I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted because Dottie's just sitting in the hallway, like, chittering. You can't hear her because it's too quiet, but she's sitting in the hallway like meh, 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 meh. That's that's the basic rule of outside. The first rule of outside is pants. Yeah. Okay. I mean the first thing Adam and Eve did when they gained knowledge was grab some fig leaves. The that first was thing one. Rule number one is pants. Yeah. That is that is 
with that's the best like you learned this shit when you were a baby because for you you broke that rule a lot you yanked your fucking diaper off and ran around naked and your parents didn't like it that's because you were breaking the rule and the only reason that ever bothers me when I see a baby running around naked is they're not potty trained yet. So stuff could just come flying out of that <laughs> undercarriage at any time. And that's the only reason that ever bothers me. I'm like, cool, like, cool be a hippie, let your kid run around naked. But but he could just leak stuff. <laughs> undercarriage. Everywhere. Like, like he's an 83 Miata or something. <laughs> <laughs> Probably oh, that's... That thing's gonna spring a leak at any minute. You better bring it into the shop. <laughs> Have you ever been around a small child? They do. They spring leaks from every hole in their person. Constantly. Just, this is why I got cats. Wait, wait, it, Donnie, what are you doing? Why are you climbing the wall? She's freaking out. What do you want? That's not she, gonna work, Dan. Is it, well, I think it's time for you to go to bed. She's very upset. Apparently, I'm supposed to go. She she tucks Dan in every night. She puts him to bed. And if he doesn't go to bed when she wants him to, she gets very upset. And she starts to yell at him and pace. And, and so since think, I've been out of town, I'm in fucking trouble. Yeah, so. I think it's probably... She's telling you it's bedtime. Yeah, she's she's mad. She's a fuzzy little tyrant. Oh. Stop tearing up the wall, you little maniac. Sorry. <sighs> I don't really know how to go into our next story. It's also naked, but I don't understand. I don't. Hi. I don't understand this one. I don't. I don't get it. I'm. I did. I you people. You try to figure this one out because I don't get it. Burglar found taking a bath with with a plate of Cheetos in Louisiana home. Oh. Okay. Burglar has been caught orange-handed taking a bath with Cheetos in the comfort of someone else's home. Evelyn Washington was allegedly discovered naked in a tub with a plate of the half-eaten chips. Okay, Cheetos are not a chip. First of all. Monroe, Louisiana resident Frida Gray says she returned from a long day's work to find the unwelcome guest. Gray believes Washington smashed through a side window and then promptly raided the pantry. Gray says she's... No, God bless her heart. Gray says she allowed oh. Washington to borrow some clothes before notifying police. That is very decent of you. That, yeah, especially when you walk in and there's a lady in your bathtub naked eating <laughs> Cheetos. It's, how do you find yourself thinking... <laughs> This is the progression I wish my day to take. Yeah. <clears throat> Where Let's do you see what snack they got? Oh, that's a nice tub. Hmm. <laughs> Apparently, the cat's sleeping in the bathroom. Um, bring him some Cheetos. Bring him some Cheetos. Yeah. Just it. How do you wake up one morning and say, you know what? By five o'clock, I better be naked in a bath eating Cheetos. I don't care how it happens. Well, and if she had to loan her clothes, did she break in naked? That's that sounds like. A... Did she not come with clothes? <laughs> I don't know. Because if you're going to smash a window, I highly recommend you wear clothes. Yes. There are places you do not want glass to get. Yes. Which is why I don't understand glass sex toys, because all you need is one little crack and you got fucking problems, man. I don't get it, but. Yes. Can I help you? He's interrupting. Um... Hi, Loki. He wants to talk to Dottie. Yeah. They're, they're fucking communing. I just, I, I. I, I I cannot make the leap of I'm in some stranger's house, so obviously I should n I should be naked and I need a bag of snacks. Yeah, I'm not. It's like all of these to me. All of these ideas are like flying around completely separate from one another. But for her, somehow they all just sort of formed into this bad idea of Ultron. 
Like maybe she broke in, took the Cheetos, but then she got Cheeto dust on her hands and she started to rub it off, but then she got Cheeto dust on her. So she was like, well, I need a bath now. I might as well enjoy this snack in a relaxing bath in someone else's house. Yeah. The police, they're not very understanding about that. No, no. That kind of makes them a little cranky. But God bless that lady for giving her clothes. That was really nice. What are you doing in my bathtub? Do you want some pants? Get out. Got it. <laughs> oh. oh. Did your sister wake you up? I know. She's being crazy right now. I don't know what's going on with her. She, now she's just running up and down the hallway. I can hear her. And we have one last one this week. And this, you know, I have many of my friends who have kids are like, oh, you should have kids. They all say you should have kids. They tell kids are the best thing. They love having kids. So I'm saving. I am saving this story for the next time one of them tells me you should have kids. I'm saving it. And Audience, I'm... can't you just see Nash with like 14 kids? Ladies and gentlemen, I, I advise you to bookmark this story as well. You can use it. it. This is ammunition for you. Boy, 12, steals credit card and goes on Bali holiday after fight with mother. Wow. 12-year-old Sydney boy stole his parents' credit card tricked his grandmother into giving him his passport and flew to Bali on his own after a family Holy argument. Shit. The boy was told he couldn't go to Bali by his mother, but managed to book himself flights, researching an airline that allowed 12 year olds to fly unaccompanied and a hotel room and to depart the country unimpeded. Telling his family he was going to school, he rode his Razor scooter to the local train station from where he traveled to the airport and using a self-service check-in terminal, boarded a flight for Perth, then another for Indonesia. Uh, he was only quizzed once at Perth airport when staff asked him for identification to prove he was over 12. They just asked for my student ID and passport to prove I'm over 12 and that I'm in secondary school. It was, quote, it was great because I wanted to go on an adventure. <laughs> Wow. The stones on this little right? bastard. And how did nobody at any point, like, oh, no, no, I'm fine. Nobody dropped you off? Like, <laughs> this wasn't suspicious to anybody? Oh, it gets better. I This quote is just driving me nuts. After his school reported he was absent, his family scrambled to find out where he was. Discovering he was in Bali, his mother, Emma, flew there to collect him. Emma said the boy doesn't like hearing the word no. Most 12-year-old boys don't deal with that shit. Because your kid sounds like an entitled little asshole. No shit! And y'all sound like you do a lot of enabling that, because... Yeah, the whole channel's like, this kid's cool. This kid's awesome. You no. know what? No, no. This kid's a little shit. This kid's a little shithead. Yeah. This is a prick. This is a future politician, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. This is the kind of person that says... Well, there wasn't a rule that says I couldn't. This is the kid in six years who's going to be threatening the life of a McDonald's person because they ran out of McNuggets and wind up on the show again. Because anybody tells him no, and he just flips a bitch, apparently. I mean, my God. This, <laughs> this kid needs like three weeks in his room with nothing but AM radio. I, I don't want to be up. This is this is the stories like this. I hear this and I'm like, oh, hell no. I do not want one of those little bastards. I do not want to be responsible for this. Yeah. This is not what I want. It, you you can Connecting is a lot harder than it used to be. Say what? Like I watch my sisters and like. 
it used to be like if you can keep your kids like alive, relatively well groomed, and make them productive members of society, good job. Now it's like, oh, oh, you do soy milk? Did you know that that causes 16 types of cancer? My kids are on a paleo vegan diet and they only eat tree bark. Like, fuck you. <laughs> I can't imagine being a parent today. Like, that shit's fucking hard. Like, everything, everything you do is wrong. I played everything. in, I played in mud. Yeah. Yeah. When I was six, I, I loved it when it rained because I went outside in the backyard and there was mud. This one cracked his head open 16 times. <laughs> it was legal. Like, now it makes not sense. Not 16. Now like, it makes your, sense. What was your nickname in the army? Uncle Fester. Why was that your nickname in the army? Because when they shaved my head, I looked like fucking Frankenstein. All the scars. And I set the house on fire once. My I sister threw me down a flight of stairs at three years old, and I swallowed my two front teeth and my bottom lip ripped off. Off of my face. I didn't die. I didn't have front teeth until I was like eight or nine. But I didn't die. How, how do you ground a 12-year-old who knows how to fly to Bali by himself? You take <laughs> away everything. You Chains. leave him with nothing but AM radio. Chains. No phone. No TV, no Xbox, nothing oh. with a fucking smart Wi-Fi connection. No, you get AM radio. Enjoy three weeks of NPR. I I like actually NP. I don't think NPR is on AM radio anymore. No. Well, some of the stations are. No. Oh no. At AM radio. It's all conservative talk radio. No, because my local the the New York City NPR station. If you want it in New Jersey, it's on AM. Okay, well. They have an FM and an AM frequency. Okay. And I like it. But at 12, I would not have, is what I'm saying. <laughs> and if I was a 12-year-old asshole who flew myself to Bali, I wouldn't want to listen to nothing but, like, all things considered for three weeks. Is what I'm saying. Oh, well, the first thing we've learned this week is kids are sneaky little bastards. Fuck kids, man. You have got to watch them. Because, until look, until you are no longer legally responsible for them anymore, watch them like hawks because they will ruin your life. Even when you are legally responsible for it, aren't legally responsible for them, the world will still hold you responsible for them. If they turn out to be assholes, the world's still going to blame you. Yeah. Again, this is why I have cats. Because if my cats grow up to be entitled little assholes, people will be like, well, of course they did. They're cats. Not, you're a bad mother. We've learned naked in a tub eating Cheetos is not any way to go through life, lady. Unless it's your own tub and your own Cheetos. Okay, well... If yeah. it's your own tub and your own Cheetos, that's fine. Um, we've learned pants are not optional. No. This, this is no. a basic... This is the first rule, guys. What are you doing? They never answer. I ask this one what he's doing all the time, and they never answer. <laughs> Hi. Or oh, you want to punch me in the face? They never have an alibi. We've learned if you're going to attempt crime, your disguise needs to be a disguise. A disguise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, translucent does not count, nor does no. not covering your face. This okay, is the going? identifying area. <laughs> oh, okay. From roughly here to here, this is how they identify you. You want it? Yeah, you definitely want to this, include yeah. these, this area. And if you have notable hair like I do, you want to occlude this area as well. We've learned that if you've already given them your money, your boycott has already failed. Yeah. You you I, lose boycott. You've already lost. Game over. You have to stop give stop giving them the money. That's how the boycott. How do you not get this? Hi there, Dottie. Oh no, that was still Peggy. Dottie doesn't let me catch her when I'm on the air. She won't enter the room when I'm on the air. She's too smart. And finally, we've learned um, 
sixteen hundred dollars is not going to blow Taylor Swift's head hair back. No, that's not that's not going to impress her. That's. To be like, wow, $1,600, finally I can retire from wearing couture and making billions of dollars. <sighs> no. I don't... What? This... this is what romantic comedies do to people. 